Hey everyone, it's Jen Fishburn. Welcome to my show, Preterism Changes Everything. I hope you're having a good day. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. We finished uh, Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, the Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And uh, so now we are ready to get on to Genesis 1-2. Now we are, um, I'm not going to take this long with the whole Bible, I promise, um, but we are going to take a while to do Genesis chapter one, probably longer than the rest of the Bible, um, just because I want to lay a good strong foundation and I want us to learn some, uh, some concepts on how to study the Bible and, um, and just really learn uh, some particular words and things like that. <clears throat> So um, we're going to go move on to Genesis 1-2 and uh, let's read it. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of Elohim was hovering over the face of the waters. Now I am going to use Elohim and Yehovah throughout the Bible, um, hopefully every time as if I can remember to do so, but that will help you to start learning and seeing uh, really how those words should be used. Um, Yehovah is a name and Elohim really just means um, uh, God or gods or divine uh, having to do with the spiritual realm and so we want to start seeing um, really how they were intended to be used all right okay so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do a little bit of a uh, few word studies today and uh, just help us to come to a better understanding of what's happening in Genesis 1 2 so the first thing is the earth the earth in Hebrew is Eretz, and it's basically where the people live. So that's real easy. We've determined that one already, right? So the earth was without form and void. Now those uh, without form just means uh, formlessness, obviously, um, emptiness. Uh, primarily, it means it's, it's difficult to seize. It's difficult to get your hands on and grasp. Think of like a slime or something like that. You just, you can't grab a hold of it. Um, let's look at a few other verses that use that same word um, and then we'll see how those are used as well and that will help us to look a little bit more at what it means. Deuteronomy 32.10, he found him in a desert land and in the howling waste of the wilderness. So the word waste there is the same as without form. So we can look at what, a, what does a wilderness look like? It's just a wasted piece of land. So um, it wasn't worth anything at this point. Job 12, 24, um, in the book of Job, we find um, a lot of words or a lot of verses, passages that talk about creation. And even though Job's friends may have not always had the right answers, uh, they knew a lot about creation and they got a lot of creation things right. So we're gonna be looking at Job a lot during this time. All right, Job 12, 24. He takes away understanding from the chiefs of the people of the earth and makes them wander in a pathless, pathless waste. So it's just a place that there's no paths, there's no places for people to walk, there, uh, nothing has been done to it. It's just, you know, just a wilderness, a waste type of place. Job 26, seven. He stretches out the north over the empty space and hangs the earth on nothing. The empty space there is the same word as formless or without form. And so there's just basically nothing going on there. And the word void just means empty. So in the Hebrew, formless and void is, in Hebrew is tohu wabohu. I'll say that again, tohu wabohu. I love that word, word words. Um, and so th that's basically a Hebrew parallelism. So those are, uh, parallelism is basically two words that mean something very similar and they just give more context so that you, gives more depth uh, and meaning to it. So basically formless and void mean the same thing. Now, um, this was just interesting. I thought I would share this with you. Um, some, a couple of the rabbis have given their understanding of what they think is going on here. Whether this is absolutely what was originally intended or not, I don't know. But it is interesting and so I thought I'd share it. All right, so um, they've got some of their own writings, these rabbis, and so uh, this, these are what I'm going to be referencing here. So in Genesis Rabbah 2.2, 2, 
the rabbis Abahu and Judah ben Simon give analogies in which tohu wabohu means bewildered and astonished. So this is a, a mental, a mental picture. If, if you were mentally formless and void, it would be bewildered and astonished. Now that is referring to the earth's confusion after having been created simultaneously with the heavens in verses one, uh, Genesis one, one. Now the earth is playing an inferior role. So the earth has, is, is like, okay, now I'm just this big blob and nothing is happening and it's all dark and you know, I don't understand it. I'm confused. I'm, uh, I'm astonished. I bewildered. I don't know what's going on. That's kind of the picture of what the earth is saying. If it were to be, um, you know, uh, personified basically. <clears throat> All right, so Abraham Bar Haya, who was another uh, 12th century rabbi, says that um, the tohu wabohu uh, means matter or form. And uh, uh, the same idea of that appears in Bahir 2, 9 to 10. So what we've got here is in Genesis 1, 1, we have the creation of time. In Genesis 1, 2, we have the creation of matter, and we know that time, space, and matter are a trilogy. So what verse or where do you think we have the creation of space? I want you to go ahead and uh, put that in the, answer that in the comments if you want to. I'm not gonna tell you that answer right now. All right, so um, that's what we've got at the beginning. All right, now, uh, the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. Now that darkness there is really, really, really dark, like a black darkness. There's no light whatsoever. We can't even imagine what that's like in our lives today. We have lights everywhere. Um, at nighttime, people leave on night lights and we've got little electronic lights that are all over. Outside, we've got street lights and um, car lights and, you know, we can't even see the stars. We have so many lights. So it's hard for us to imagine how pitch dark that was, but that was absolutely the pitchest dark that you can absolutely imagine. So uh, the darkness was over the face of the deep. Now, what is face? Face in Hebrew is pane, and that just means what faces you. So heaven faced the earth, earth faced the heavens. <laughs> so when God looked down from heaven and what he saw then was called the face of the earth. That's all that that means. All right, so now um, someone has says that if, um, if there were no mountains and there were no valleys, and it was the land of the earth was perfectly flat all the way across, it would be covered by one and a half miles of ocean water. That's how much water that we have on earth. So if we are looking at, let's say that God is looking down uh, from heaven at the face of the earth, and at this point there's no mountains, there's no trees, there's no valleys, there's no anything, um, and it is just covered by all of this water, a mile and a half of water. That's kind of the picture of what it is that we're looking at. So the next one is, the next word we want to look at is the deep, the face of the deep. So what is the deep? The deep is that water, but let's take a look at it and see. So in uh, Hebrew, that's tehom, and um, it can be, sometimes it's translated as abyss or pit, um, or even a bottomless pit, but it means the subterranean waters. So let's take a look um, and see how else this is used in the Bible. So it's, it's the same word that we see in uh, the flood in Noah's day. So in Genesis 7, 11, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep or the abyss burst forth and the windows of the heavens were opened. So the, um, the abyss in creation is the same one that gives all the waters to um, the great flood. In Exodus 15, 4, Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the deep, or the abyss, 
like a stone. So even the Red Sea was called an abyss or the deep. All right. So that's giving us a little bit more information here. In uh, Deuteronomy 8, 7, for Yehovah, your Elohim, is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs. Now the word for springs there is the exact same word. Um, you can see that the translators, they just pick and choose whatever words that they want uh, to translate it, right? Because it is the same word that means a deep or abyss. So it's really um, Elohim, uh, Yehovah is bringing them, Israel, into a land flowing with lots of underground water. That's basically what this verse is saying. All right. And in Job 38, verses 28 through 30. Now I'm going to read this whole little passage right here. Um, I want you to kind of keep this in mind when we get to what we're going to talk about tomorrow. But um, today it's going to tell us a little bit about the deep, but it's going to play a big part into what we're doing tomorrow as well. All right. He has the rain. No, sorry. Has the rain a father or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb did the ice come forth and who has given birth to the frost of heaven? The waters become hard like stone and the face of the deep or the abyss is frozen. All right. So now we've got this abyss can be frozen. What does that remind you of? Antarctica. Uh, the Ice Age, the, the big, you know, ice chunks, um, whatever they are. Remember the rest of that verse about birth and womb and all that kind of stuff. All right. Psalm 42. You guys ever sing a song or talk about deep calls into deep? And we hear all of these spiritual things about deep calls into deep. Well, let's see what that really is talking about. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon and from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. What are they talking about? Just two different places where the water is under the ground. Subterranean waters, two different places. And they're hearing one another because they're close by. That's all that this is talking about. Of course, it has a deeper meaning than that, but as far as um, just getting the, uh, the meaning of the words deep, um, it's talking about the waters under the ground, all right? It's not talking about, uh, well, all the other stuff that they, that they put into those songs and the, and the teachings there. All right, Jonah. When Jonah was in the belly of the great fish, he prayed. He prayed to Yehovah, my Elohim. I called out to Elef Yehovah out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, the pit, the deep abyss. O oh, Yehovah, my Elohim. So deep pit abyss, they were all the places where Jonah was when he was in the belly of the fish. What was that? The water underneath. That's the subterranean waters, the big sea, the big ocean, way down deep. Let's look at one more passage here that uses the same word. Now this is in Revelation and um, the Greek for this is the same as the Hebrew um, for abyss uh, or deep. Let's take a look. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit or the abyss in a great chain. So, yep, the one in Revelation is the same one as in Genesis 1. And uh, so now that gives us a whole lot more meaning. Now, we're not going to get to Revelation yet and find out why there's smoke and all that kind of stuff coming from it. But it is the same thing. So before there was anything created on the earth, the first thing we see is the abyss. That was actually the first um, before day one of creation. 
right? So the abyss was the first thing. So uh, let's go back and review it one more time real quick here. Let's see, where am I? Mm. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. So I hope that gives you just a little bit more insight into what is going on now. You have a better picture. What we've got going on is a big blob of water. We can't grasp it. Um, it's not, it, it's, it's kind of totally useless at this point. And so we can see why there might be some confusion there if Earth was able to actually think, uh, what, is, what in the world is going on here? I thought I was created with the heavens and now all of a sudden here I am just this big blob of watery type stuff that's absolutely useless. Well, let's find out about is that useless or what was going on there um, tomorrow. Uh, we didn't get to talk about family today. We ran out of time. So tomorrow I'm going to talk about the family of God when we talk about the second half of Genesis 1-2. So hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you then. Bye.